Welcome to McCart Pro's beginner acrylic education video, made specifically for beginner nail techs. In this tutorial, we will guide you through the essential steps of acrylic application, from proper product selection all the way to avoiding common pitfalls. Now, let's get started. Before we begin, always remember to put on gloves and avoid ex overexposure to your skin. Safety should always be the top priority when working with nail products. Now, let's look at the essential items that you'll need when working with acrylic. First, you'll need monomer. This one here is McCart Pro's EMA monomer, which is formulated as a low odor monomer. Next, you'll also need a good cover acrylic powder. This one I'm using here is also from McCart Pro. And finally, you'll also need a 100% Kalinsky brush. I'm using McCart Pro's premium 100% Kalinsky brush, which has super soft, silky hairs. This is going to ensure that my application is smooth and buttery and not streaky. For this demonstration today, I will also be using a crimped 100% Klinsky brush in the size number 10. Lastly, if you are a beginner, I highly suggest that you get a brush cleaner close by and this will help soften up any acrylic that you might get stuck in your brush today. For this tutorial today, I will be using my favorite shade, Pink Silk. This is a cover acrylic formula from a Cart Pro. We'll be using four different bead sizes today and consistencies to build out our nails. The most important aspect of working with acrylic powder is learning to control your liquid to powder ratio. Where you tap the brush on the side of the bottom or dish will determine how much liquid you'd retain in your bristles. The closer to the tip of the brush you tap, the more monomer you will retain in your brush. Now this is going to give me a big runny bead. Starting out with a first big bead, I'm going to tap the tip of the brush into our powder at a 45 degree angle for a big bead. This big bead is going to be placed on the free edge of our nail. Always remember to give our powder and monomer a second to react with each other before placing it down onto the nail. This first big bead needs to cover the entire free edge of that nail and this is where we're going to build out the length of the nail. One of the most important things to do with the first big bead is always to remember to point your client's fingers downwards towards the table. This is going to allow gravity to help you pull that acrylic bead down towards the tip of the nail and help guide your acrylic on the tip. You should be only using the tapping motion during this stage. Once the acrylic has had a chance to start setting, you can now start using the swiping motion to smooth out that acrylic. It is very important that you do not use a painting motion, which may result in too much acrylic being removed from the nail. I like to take the body of the brush and lightly slide down the side of the nail, and this is so that I can keep my two sides as crispy as possible and avoid having to spend too much time to file my nails later on. Also, if you have any excess acrylic, go ahead and take the back of your brush and cut out that acrylic and then swipe it out from underneath the nail. You can see that I'm continuously swiping on the nail to keep it as smooth as possible and then cutting any excess product out from under the nails here. Throughout this tutorial today, you will continuously see me swiping down the sides and near the edges of the nail. This is so that I can keep the nail as crisp as possible. And just remember, the better your application, the less filing you have to do later on. This is going to help you keep your appointments as effective as possible because time is money. Let's go ahead and do the first bead one more time. However, this time I will not be pointing the nail downwards. This is a common mistake that most beginners will start with, and this is because they wanna be able to look at the bead. However, you're going to be ending up having that acrylic bead stuck in that place where you first put it down, and it's going to start strolling down the sides. This is because gravity pulls only in one direction, and that is down. So you wanna make sure that you don't forget to point your client's fingers downwards so that you don't get that acrylic stuck in one place. Another common mistake that we tend to see in our beginners is the painting motion rather than the swiping motion. You can see that with the painting motion, I'm going to end up removing a lot of acrylic and this is going to result in a very thin free edge area. For the second bead, this is going to be our apex bead. This is going to be the highest point in the nail, so we're going to use a medium sized bead that's a little bit more on the drier side by bouncing twice in our powder. As you can see, the bead is a lot drier than our first bead, and also it's a lot smaller of a bead. Go ahead and place that bead down right at the top of the first bead. This is going to be our apex bead. When working with the apex bead, it is super important by pushing everything into the center first, and you're gonna use the body of your brush to do this. Tap the bead into the center, and once the two sides have been set, go ahead and take the tip of your brush and start blending downwards by swiping. 
When you're blending these beads down, make sure to always work on the two sides before you start working on blending the middle. This way you will not push the acrylic and cause dripping down the sides. Don't forget to be careful not to touch the top part of this bead. You want to keep the integrity of this bead and you wanna make sure that you try to stay away from touching the top half of that, which can oftentimes lead to flattening out that bead. You would rather have a super high apex than no apex at all, as this is the weakest point in the nail. You can see from the side view that it tapers down towards that free edge, and it is also important that you take your brush and keep the sides as clean as possible by swiping down the edges right here. Now let's do our apex bead one more time. However, this time, instead of working from the side into the middle, we're going to start by blending out the middle first. You can see that the shape of this apex has already now been mostly flattened, and now the bead is starting to drool from the side. This is causing me to have to chase after that bead and then push everything back into the center. However, since the bead has mostly set by this point, the sides are going to be a lot lumpier and thicker. You can see that at this point, most of the bead is flat and also touching the skin. Now let's go in with our cuticle bead. The cuticle bead will be a small bead, so you should start by tapping towards the top of that brush. It is going to be a little bit wetter than a dry bead, and you will also be only bouncing once. It is a lot easier to place that down vertical to the nail. This is so that you have a thinner bead when placing the cuticle bead down. Make sure to keep that bead a little bit away from the actual cuticle and then work with a slightly wet brush and move towards that bead by pushing the bead towards the top of that cuticle area. It is important not to place the bead right at the cuticle because you will end up flooding that cuticle. With a flooded cuticle, you will oftentimes cause lifting, which will then result in retention issues. Once that bead is pretty close to the cuticle, you can then work on starting to swipe down and blend in that cuticle bead back into our second apex bead. Make sure that when you are blending this bead, you are starting from the side and then working your way back into the middle as usual. If you end up having a little bit of flooding, make sure to take the tip of your brush and carve out any excess acrylic off of the cuticle area. As you can see, I'm using a tapping motion to move that acrylic towards the cuticle bead as close as possible. A lot of beginners struggle with their cuticle bead with a wider brush, so placing that bead down slightly differently may help you clean up your cuticle bead. Now let's go ahead and do the cuticle bead one more time, but this time we're going to place that bead right at the cuticle. You can see that immediately the acrylic is going to start flooding into that cuticle. This is because acrylic is a self-leveling product and it has movement. When a cuticle is flooded, this is going to cause lifting over time and also allergies. If you happen to have any missed spots, go ahead and use a micro bead. A micro bead essentially is a very small bead that you will be using for blending any missed spots. And I also use this to blend any beads together. Make sure that your bead is a little bit more on the wetter side when working with your micro bead. This will give you enough time to blend that bead back into the original nail and become seamless. A micro bead is super helpful when working with acrylic as a beginner because if you forget to blend a bead or if you have any missed spots, you can always go back and fill that back in with a micro bead. As you can see here, the application is now done and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the sides of that nail and keep it as crisp as possible. If you are a beginner who struggles with getting acrylic stuck in your brush, the key is to remember that a Kalinsky brush is not a painting brush. The main movements that you should be using with a Kalinsky brush is more of a swiping motion and also a tapping motion with the brush kept parallel to the nail. To help you better understand the difference between swiping versus painting, I'm going to show you the difference. The painting motion has a lot shorter of strokes and in fact the brush is almost kept perpendicular to the actual nail. By doing this I'm removing a lot of acrylic and leaving that acrylic mostly transparent on the nail and most of that acrylic is now actually sitting in my brush. Now with this clogged brush I'm going to have to go and clean it out. I do suggest that as a beginner, you keep some brush cleaner on the side and you're going to swirl that brush around in some brush cleaner and wipe it back and forth on a paper towel. Make sure that you do not ever use pure acetone on your bristles as you will end up drying out your Kalinsky brush. 
Remember, a good, healthy Kolinsky brush can last you for years, and it is one of your most important tools as a nail technician. And there you have it. This brings us to the end of our tutorial today. As you can see, the application on the nail does not require much filing after, and this is going to be able to help me keep my appointments as effective as possible. We hope that this video is able to help some of you out there that might be struggling with your acrylic application. Let us know in the comment section below if this video was able to help you. And also let us know what other types of content you would like to see from us. See you all next time.